sorry about that. You know, we're, we're filming in this high tech stage here with, you know, our backdrop as what we... between it's kind of like between two ferns. This is between, you know what? We could call it between two vines. Yes. But I only got one or two. One? I don't know. Oh, a wall full one of over there. There's a wall full of vines. Okay. Maybe we call this segment a wall full of vines. A wall full of vines? A wall full of vines. I do like waffles. I do like vineyards. Yeah. Uh, and uh, like wine. Uh, yeah. Uh, there you go. Yeah. I think we got, instead of Y, Arizona, maybe between some vines. Between the vines? Between the vines. Between the vines. I like it. <laughs> what do you guys think? Between the vines. Maybe we start doing these segments between the vines. Between so we're sitting here with Cassandra. And Cassandra is fairly new to... Arizona? Are you? Well, I've been coming here for about eight years. I, I uh, had to come down here for work a couple of times and then I met the love of my life who has lived here for about 25 years. And uh, thankfully he married me and now I can stay here forever. Opposed to where? Oh, I'm from Montreal and it's really cold and awful up there and and uh, I don't miss it. Not right. just I miss my friends, but not the city. Uh, I'm from Minnesota, so I know all about the cold. Oh yeah, you sure do. I, I tell you what, you can't shovel sunshine down here. No, no. I mean, there's plenty of it too. You know what's amazing about Arizona is it feels so tropical. Like when you look around every day, you don't feel like you're in the fifth biggest city in the United States. You feel like you are somewhere tropical and every day feels like a vacation. Yeah, well, it, one thing if you guys end up coming down and buying something down in Arizona, one of the things I know that you almost lose track of time. It's real easy to lose track of time because every day is beautiful and nice. And the biggest decision you really have to worry about is, is it a short stay or a long pants day? That's yeah. Or short sleeve day or t-shirt day. What flip-flops am I gonna wear today? Is, is really my biggest concern when I wake up. Yeah. Um, every sunset is spectacular. I, you know, we get five days of rain a year. Um, it's, it's just perfect. And even in the winter, uh, and it cools off a little bit, it still feels really good. There's a really good smell in the air every day. Life is, life is really great in Arizona. So she's definitely sold on Arizona. No so doubt. I like kind of talking about experiences in the move and what people need to expect and what are some of the surprises and stuff like that. So during uh, uh, a move, you were telling me one time of, uh, was it a U-Haul? Yeah, so. Tell me that story. Sounds, this is a good story. So 20 years ago, uh, as I said, I grew up in Montreal and I moved to Toronto and I convinced my parents to move there as well. And about a month after I moved, my parents were ready. Um, so they, so I went back to Montreal with my boyfriend at the time. We packed up my parents' stuff in a U-Haul and we were driving from Montreal to Toronto, which is 550 kilometers. So, you know, normally it's a five hour drive, but in a U-Haul you're expected to take a little longer. That's, so is this a U-Haul trailer or a U-Haul truck? It was a, one of those 12 foot cube trucks. Okay. And um, we were on the highway maybe an hour and a half and the truck broke down and we sat on the side of the road for a good four hours before we came and somebody sprayed something and everything worked again and off we went. What? Yeah. They sprayed something in they the They sprayed truck something into the motor and things worked again. I have no idea. I was, you know, 20 something years old. I have no idea what was going on. Um, then we arrive uh, at the building that my parents were moving into and there was this huge concrete slab over the main entrance to the building. And that concrete slab was only 11 feet high and the U-Haul was 12 feet high. So I um, obviously wasn't paying enough attention and I drove right under the concrete slab and I ripped that U-Haul open like a can of sardines. <laughs> and then it started to rain oh, God. with all of my mother's beautiful antique 
dining set and antique bedroom set, still a new haul, her mattress, everything, her boxes, everything. I remember kind of throwing myself on the ground and my father getting out of his car because they were following us in their car. And my father, you know, kind of looking down at me like, you idiot. And there's a huge <laughs> sign on the dashboard in the U-Haul that says any damage to the top of the truck will not be covered by insurance. So I was, I was pretty anxious bringing that truck back once we got it empty. <laughs> and I had to, I had to go back and take pictures of the awning and take pictures of the lack of signage. And ultimately U-Haul agreed it wasn't entirely my fault because it wasn't super clear that the concrete slab was at 11 feet. So I got away with it. And foolishly, those people at U-Haul have rented drugs to me <laughs> since. <laughs> so, uh, lesson learned. Lesson learned. Pay attention to the height of your U-Haul. And don't try to avoid moving on rainy days, although you can't really. So did, how far did you take the top off? Was it like clean I off? mean, it ripped open through the middle. And it was like, like a can. Like it just... It was, it was bad. It was, like all the way off? Like it was Well, I kept, I mean, I, no, I didn't keep, it, it ripped like a hole through the middle of the roof. And then I just, I had to keep going to clear the awning. Oh, so it was where it kind of dipped down like a V or something? Yeah. Like? I mean, I could draw it for you if you want. It, it was. No, I just, I'm picturing it in my head now. like I gave the U-Haul a sunroof. Hmm. I, I know. If if you guys decide to pack up everything and move down here like we did, um, when I moved down, I, I rented a, a rider truck. Yeah. yeah. And I'll never, if, if my kids are watching this, if you guys ever decide to come down here, I'm not driving. No way. Wasn't a good drive? Oh my God. No. I, I packed this rider truck. The, the biggest rider truck you get, I think, was 27 feet, and I had it. I, I pre-packed my garage that was 27 feet deep and 12 feet wide at one stall. So I knew exactly how much I could get in there. And I packed it so tight and it was so heavy. Thank God you don't have to go out to the weigh stations because it was overweighted. And it has a governor on there. We were going up a hill coming in at 15 miles an hour because it was so heavy getting up the hill, coming down. I was on the brakes and we we're going 95 miles an hour and I was scared shitless and there was a curve coming up. I was so tense. I took white me... knuckling it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I was white knuckling. I, I'll never do that again. So, lesson learned. Yeah. I'm just, if somebody's going to move, look into professional movers. You're going that far. Yeah. Or that or don't overload the, the vehicles. No. And the other thing too. Big mistake, taking all kinds of crap down here that you don't need. Mm -hmm. A shovel, you don't need you a freaking shovel. Don't need a shovel here. You no. Don't, don't need winter tires here. No. No. You, you don't, freaking winter clothes, you don't need boots. Well, you may go back and visit your friends in Minnesota, then you need your winter coat to do that. Why go back in the wintertime? True. I'll go back maybe in the summertime and fight the mosquitoes, but I'm not going back to fight the snow. No way. So here's another mistake we made. Um, my husband had been transferred to Missouri for a couple of years and he bought a very large house while he was there. And it was 6,000 square feet and it needed a heck of a lot of furniture. And then he decided uh, that, that he wanted to move back to Phoenix. And we made the decision that um, we would go into a smaller house and obviously we didn't need all that furniture. So I decided to uh, put some of the furniture we wanted to sell on Facebook Marketplace. And this was about six weeks before the final closing on the house. And one Saturday morning at 8 a.m. I started posting furniture and by 2 p.m. that day I had emptied about 75% of the house. And for the next six weeks, John and I had one sofa to sit on, to eat on, to watch TV, to do everything. That's all we had left in this house for six weeks. So if you're going to sell stuff on Marketplace, don't do it six weeks before you move because things go pretty quickly. Well, I think that's actually a pretty good thing. To get, I mean, sure, it it's, just... it's done. You know what happened to us is we ended up selling our house and I had... A big, also a pretty big house, a real big house, and 
couldn't get rid of all the shit. I was, I was taking trailer loads to Goodwill because the kids don't want it. You know, they don't, they don't have a, you know, big place. They're, yeah. you know, they're in apartments, you know, and so they don't want all that furniture. So then you put it in storage and you have it sitting in storage for yeah. a year. And then what happens? You go back a year later to take it back to Goodwill. Yeah. You know, so if you can get rid of this stuff, get rid of it. Get rid you of don't it. need, trust me, you don't need the stuff that you're bringing back from up north down here. The only thing that you might want to keep are stuff that is sentimental value. But trust me, couches, dining room sets and stuff, but get rid of that. Get rid there. of it. You don't need to have that down. Down here, the, the style and taste and the functionality is totally different. It's outdoor living here um so spend more money on on the stuff that actually fits here because the stuff back it's just it's not the same yeah and it's 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 so much cheaper to get it here it is but be prepared to spend a little bit of money on outdoor furniture because it has to be able to endure that sun and that heat you need good yep. quality outdoor furniture if you buy cheap stuff it just doesn't last Yep, it's disposable if, if you're gonna buy the cheap yeah. wicker stuff. Which isn't good for the environment. No, so it's, you're gonna, you're gonna spend a little bit more money on the, the nicer stuff here uh, for outdoor, but it's definitely outdoor living here. Um, it's beautiful here. Um, you don't need the big house. Uh, that's the other thing coming down here. You don't need like back up north where there's snow and you're hibernating for six months. You need big house. Yeah, one of the biggest things you had to, I had to get used to here, and you probably feel the same mm -hmm. as uh, in Canada, nobody wears their shoes inside someone else's home. And that's probably because we have winter and, and you know snow goes yep. on the sidewalks. Yep. So you always take your shoes off at the door. Here, nobody takes their shoes off anywhere. No. So no. Make, make sure your toenails are always on fleek, ladies. Well, the other thing is um, everything's hardwood floors or tile, usually tile. Hardwood floor is not, not real common. It's the fake hardwood floor. It's ceramic and stuff that looks like hardwood because down here they have termites. Oh, and yes. wood doesn't do real well here. Um, yeah. It attracts termites. So, you know, that's the other thing. Termites, scorpions. I haven't seen any scorpions. I've never seen one either. Yeah, I've, I've been here now coming up on three and a half years. I haven't seen a scorpion yet. We do spray for bugs uh, once every four months. Yeah. You know? Well, I, I think that's that's kind of normal too, depending on if you buy a house in an association, uh, the association will come out and you know take care of that. You're, you're responsible for your own house and stuff like that, and maintaining that, you know, for for bugs too. But yeah. um, it, if you're on top of it. You know, it takes care of itself. But I haven't seen a, a scorpion since I've been down here. I was kind of worried about that type of stuff. Yeah. yeah. This is it, Phoenix or Australia? Yeah. it's So um, you might see more of that type of stuff if you're closer to the mountains where you're closer to the actual desert. But if you're in a development, uh, you're not going to see, you're not going to see snakes. You're not going to see spiders. You're not going to see, you're not going to see that, that stuff. Yeah. The only time you really see that stuff is if you're going hiking and very rarely you're going to see a lot of that stuff. And just so you know, snakes are only out when it's above a hundred degrees here. They're there. Once it gets above a hundred degrees, that's when the snakes will come out and you'll see them come out maybe on the golf courses, but actually hiking and stuff like that. I rarely ever came across a snake. They, I've seen two snakes on, you know, many, many, many hikes. So don't worry too much about the snakes. Yeah, yeah. they're, and it's, it's kind of, when you do come across a snake, it's kind of fun because they're not like they're coming after or anything like that. They're, you know, on their way looking for stuff. And I have a kind of a funny story about, I was golfing and we seen a rattlesnake uh, going through and there was a, a little tiny bunny, but the bunnies down here, rabbits, are smaller they're they look like they're little baby bunnies but that's the all the bigger they get are these little things and this 
little bunny was just hopping around the snake trying to divert it because I'm sure it was going towards its den, you know. So it was trying to get its attention to distract it. I was like, boy, that's a pretty brave little bunny. But yeah, it, it's crazy. But I mean, you know, it was just, you know, it's just, it's not like you think it is. Like they make it out to be where there's all kinds of creepy critters. There, there isn't down here. Um, no. There's, I mean, literally, you know, back up north, where are you from? Did, did you have like mosquitoes and stuff like that where you had to have screen doors and sure, yeah. screen windows and stuff like Definitely. that? Definitely, but you know, for short periods of time, there'd be a, a heavy influx of mosquitoes. The rest of the year was pretty manageable. Yeah, so down here, I mean, we don't have bugs and mosquitoes. We have them come out when it's kind of the rainy season, you have some rain, stuff like that, then you want to keep your doors closed, but it, you can you can have your doors wide open down here. That's why it's outdoor living for most of the time. You don't have to worry about mosquitoes or bugs or anything like that no. coming in the house. There just really isn't any. No. Which is kind of nice. Yeah. Even at night, you can enjoy the evening without you know swatting that stuff. Yeah. You may hear some coyotes howling in the background, but that tends to lull me to sleep. So uh, yeah. that's all you got to worry about. And there is there is kind of some coyotes out every once in a while and stuff like that. Um, they're just big dogs. Don't worry about them I too much. I can't even say they're big. They're they're a medium sized dog. Um, if you have a tiny little dog, though, uh, bring them in at night. Don't don't let them out there at night because those coyotes are kind of ruthless. Yeah, true. But uh, so other stories about moving down here or moving um, in the past, what, what are some of the things that you've encountered in moving? Like, let me ask you this question, cardboard boxes or totes? Definitely the totes, they're way more durable. You just gotta pack it right, a little bubble wrap. I've moved 17 times in my life and I would definitely always recommend those big Rubbermaid totes and bubble wrap, no more cardboard. Why? Because the cardboard boxes get beat up and they, they just, they're not, you know, you're, you're a lot better off. You can protect your, um, your, your, your items better in a Rubbermaid bin. I wrote on each one the number and then I had a list on my phone of what was in each bin. So I think one of the things that I've noticed is in the Rubbermaid bins that are clear, you can see what's in them. So yeah. they get packed or they stay packed longer because you don't have, because we get down here, we had, I put everything in clear uh, bins for the most part. Uh -huh. Only the stuff that was gonna be unpacked right away, I put in boxes. Um, the clear stuff stayed packed for quite a while. Uh, yeah, we had those big black ones with the yellow lids, so you couldn't see inside. The, the biggest mistake everybody's gonna make, and I guarantee if you're watching this, you're gonna relocate to, Arizona, you're going to take way too much stuff down here. You don't need to. No. And as much as we tell you, don't, don't, don't bring a bunch of that crap down here. You're still going to bring a bunch of that stuff down here. Like, for instance, a weed whipper. Why the hell did we bring a weed whipper down here? We don't have weeds. I mean, there's, in we live in a association that takes care of the, the lawn for you. But you, you don't need that crap. You don't need a lawnmower. You don't need a snowblower. Definitely don't need a snowblower. You don't need you don't need that crap. Just if you need it, you can go out and get it. But don't even bring the shit down. It's just taking up space. Yeah, I mean, if you're lucky enough to get in an association where the landscaping is, is taking that care of that for you, but that but might not even be the place. weeds. I mean, like a weed whipper. No, there's no. Mm -mm, mm -mm, don't it, the, you spray for weeds down here? Oh yeah. You know, it, it kills the weeds. Anything that comes up. And by the way, which really surprised me is how everything grows in the desert. It grows like crazy. Yeah. If you give it a walk, you give it some water. It's amazing how fast the stuff grows. Yeah. Too much water grows way too fast. Yeah. It, it's, it's, cr you wouldn't think that this dirt, it's not like black rich soil like we have back home. It's, it's this caliche stuff but apparently has tons of minerals in it and tons of good stuff because it grows anything like. There's, I mean, so many different species nuts. of cacti and, and lots of really beautiful 
uh, majestic looking plants and, and things growing out here. It's just every day I've discovered something new. The cool thing too is it's year round that there's something that's always flowering. Yes. It doesn't matter the time of year, there's one type of plant that actually has flowers on it. So you see flowers, you see more flowers in the spring and summertime, but still in the wintertime, you get plenty of plants around here that have flowers on it, which is kind of nice. Yeah, it's always beautiful. Yeah, I mean, I, I love it. There's, there's no way in hell I'd go back north, put it that way. Ditto. <laughs> Ditto. <laughs> um, but I don't know, what, what else uh, should we tell these folks that yeah. are thinking about uh, coming to Arizona? You won't regret it. Yeah, you're not, you're, you're not going to regret it. Um, and when you're getting your house ready to sell, purge, purge, purge. Yep. Because stuff gets damaged in the trucks too, and you just, you don't need it, don't bring it. There are people in need everywhere, and donate as much as you can, and mm -hmm. just bring the things you can't live without. Yep. Yep. Just start over, start fresh. Yeah. You're, you're going to be much better off. Yeah. 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 And it's a clean start. It's, yeah. It's, it's definitely, a lot different down here. Yeah, there are. people are friendly, people are nice, people oh. say hello. <laughs> That's the other thing. So, you know, we're from, Min I'm from Minnesota where they say Minnesota nice. Yeah. <laughs> here, people are way nicer and way friendlier than you could ever expect because everybody in Phoenix, Scottsdale, um, the surrounding area, they're from somewhere else. You hardly run into somebody that's actually grew up and is actually from here. Everybody's from somewhere else. So everybody's excited to, to meet new friends and talk and stuff like that. It's very easy to blend into yeah. you know, any neighborhood that you move into because everybody else is from somewhere else. Yeah, people are, are willing to strike up a conversation, say hello, how you doing, how's your day? Um, it's, it's very friendly here. Yep. And, and that's you know one of the, the best things about it. Yeah, and it's it's crazy how many uh, people from the Midwest, um, up north, uh, Canada, uh, a lot of Canadians down here, um, yeah. and then we have a lot of Californians actually moving in. We have a bunch of people from New York that we know that have moved down here. So yeah, it, it's like all over the country. Um, lots of lots of movement here. Lots of happening. Yep. Lots of moving, shaking. Lots of cool things being built and. And uh, great restaurants and... Oh, if you're a foodie, you're gonna love it here. Phoenix is a super dog-friendly city too. A lot oh. of restaurants allow you to bring your dogs, sit yep. on the patio, and it's great. Yeah. It's really great. A lot of people have dogs here because it is very dog-friendly. It is super dog-friendly. I mean, the dogs don't necessarily love the heat, but um, thankfully we can we can bring them to a bunch of places. Yep. Oh, and that's how, how we met. That is how we met. You know? Walking our dogs, running our dogs yeah. on the golf course. Yeah, they're good. They're good friends, as are we. Yep, absolutely. I shouldn't have winked like that. That was weird. <laughs> <laughs> You're weird, so that's fine. Yeah, I'm weird. Okay. I'm strange. Fine. Whatever. <laughs> but we look forward to to helping you out with your move down here. If you want any information, more, or want our opinions on what we think feel free to contact us. I'll leave all our information down below so you can reach us. I'll catch you guys later. Catch you on the flip side. Doo -doo -doo. You like that? No. <laughs> <laughs>